Welcome to Inside Azure AI Foundry, where we put the latest AI models and tools to the test. I'm April, your host for this episode, and today we're diving into a new tool that your agent can use to interact with the browser. It's called the Browser Automation Tool. This tool enables you to build an agent that's capable of performing real world browser tasks like searching and navigating and filling out forms and booking appointments, plus more, but with natural language. And it's powered by Playwright Workspaces, which provides isolated cloud hosted browser automation for your agents. So just how does it work? You send a natural language request to the agent, something like find laptops under $1,000 with 16 gigabytes of RAM from Microsoft.com. Azure AI Foundry then spins up a secure sandbox browser session through Playwright Workspaces in your Azure subscription. The model inspects the page's structure and figures out what actions to take, whether that's clicks or form fills or navigations, and then it performs them step-by-step step inside that session. And then after each step, it checks the progress, it adjusts if needed, and it keeps going until the task is done. Linda Lee's blog post has a demo of using the browser automation tool to fill out a form. However, I'm gonna show you how I use it to help me do some online shopping, so let's get into it. We're gonna start things here within the Azure portal, and to begin, we're going to create a Playwright Workspace resource. This resource type is currently in preview. To find it, you're going to navigate to create a resource, and then you can search for it in the bar. So in this case, I'll type in Playwright Workspaces. And I do see it here within Playwright Workspaces Preview. You'll go ahead and select that, and then you'll select your subscription if there's more than one option, and then the plan is only going to be Playwright Workspaces, and then you'll go ahead and move forward with creating that resource. If you click Create, what this is going to do is take you to the next steps in that creation process, which is selecting the subscription, your resource group, a workspace name, as well as a region. Once you've filled out these fields, you'll then select review and create, and you'll create the resource itself. Once the resource has been created, I'm going to navigate back to mine. You're going to go to the resource, and this is what that looks like. The next thing that we need to do is generate the access token. By default, Playwright uses Microsoft Intra ID for authentication, which is the recommended approach. However, access token authentication is supported, but it is disabled by default because it is less secure. So we need to actually enable it to move forward. You can do so by going to access management. And then within here, your access control methods likely has this checkbox empty for Playwright service access token. You're gonna to check that box. And then from there, you're going to select generate token. When you select generate token, you're going to give your token a name as well as an expiry date as well. And your options are going to be 7, 30, 60, 90 days, and then one year. That token will pop up once you've set this. That is your only opportunity to save that token somewhere useful. In my case, I put it in my environment variables. Since I already have one created, I'm not going to recreate it in this case. But for all your access tokens, you'll be able to see them displayed here as well as their expiration dates. Next, we need to make sure that you have the proper role for your project. So coming to Access Control IAM, you want to ensure that you have the contributor role. And so in here, you're going to select View My Access. And this is where you'll be able to view what your current access level is. Mine happens to be owner, but if you are not at least a contributor at a minimum, you will need to set that. From here, we're going to head over into the Azure AI Foundry portal because now we need to actually connect this Playwright resource as a connected resource for our project. Here within the Azure AI Foundry portal, I need to navigate to the Management Center. You can do that in the left-hand panel. There's a button that says Management Center. And then within here under my project, I need to go to Connected Resources, and then I'll create a brand new connection. You're going to select the serverless model option. And the first thing you're going to do is pass in the target URI for your Playwright workspace resource. You can find that back over in the Azure portal. On the overview page for your resource, you'll go to the browser endpoint and you'll copy that to the clipboard. And then we're gonna bring that back over here into Foundry. The next thing you're going to need is going to be the API key itself. So 
So hopefully you have that stored somewhere that you can remember the actual key because it is quite long, but I do have it here. And then the final thing you're going to do is set a connection name. I'm using a default that's here. And then from there, you'll select add connection. Now that the connection's been added, I'm ready to move forward with adding this tool to my agent in Visual Studio Code. So here within Visual Studio Code, I'm using the code sample that's available in Linda Lee's blog post that I mentioned earlier. I modified things just a little bit because I like to keep my environment variables within the .env file. I do have some that are stored there. So I added an import statement to load those as well as a method to load them. And then just below that, I did create a environment variable for the project endpoint as well. So that's also in my environment variables file. From there, we're going to create the project client. We're going to use the default Azure credentials. This is where that Microsoft Enter ID authentication is coming into play. Not seen here is me actually running the command to log in. So you will need to log in in order to do that. Then just below, we need to define the Playwright connection name. So the Playwright connection name can be a little tricky if you're not quite sure where to find it. The name that it's looking for is the name for the connection that's going to be in the Azure AI Foundry portal. So as a reminder, I'm within the connected resources area. This is where I can see all my connected resources. This is that Playwright Workspaces resource and the name is going to be WSS East US2. Yours may very well be different, but I stuck with the default name. This WSS East US is going to be the connection name that you'll need to use in the code. So I do have that in my environment variable file as well. Next, we now need to define the model that's going to be used for this agent, as well as the agent name and the instructions as well. The model choice is going to be important here. The reason being is that not all models available in Foundry are going to be supported agent models. I am using GPT-40, which is one of our supported agent models. At the timing of creating this video, GPT-5 models are not currently supported, but they will be in the future. So if you do choose a GPT-5 model and you're getting a server error when you go to run your agent, that's going to be the reason why, or at least possibly a reason why. But in my case, I'm using GPT-40, so that way we can actually use this tool with the agent. You can also change the name. So the code that we have in the blog post is going to say my-agent. I changed mine to be a browser agent. And you can also pass in some instructions. And so this one is use the tool to respond. Okay, so just below there, I'll let you know what else is happening. We're going to get the agent ID itself, and then we're going to create a thread as well. The message is where we're going to pass in the actual prompt that we're going to send to this agent. And in my case, because I wanna go shopping, the prompt that I'm using is go to this website, which is microsoft.com slash surfaces or surface device, surface laptop. I essentially passed it in the website to look at the surfaces. And I'll bring that up for you just in case you're curious. And so here's the website that I'm asking it to navigate to. And on here we have various surface devices that are going to be mentioned here within this section. And I'm curious to know, based on what's here, which one should I choose? But not only am I just looking for a laptop, I have specifications. I want the agent to find the model that's best suited for content creation, especially video editing or multitasking. And then I want it to rank the options with pros and cons. So from there, we're going to do the run itself. And then we have some things to help us out here if the run happens to fail. And we also have information here with respect to the tool calls itself. So keeping in mind that that browser automation is a tool and we wanna call that tool. After everything's over, said and done, we are going to delete the agent and let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm gonna expand my space here. All right, so we have a response. The agent itself was created also have an idea of how many tokens were used. And if I keep scrolling down, I can see the response from the tool call. 
And then eventually we do get the actual response from the agent itself. So let me actually expand this so we can see it a little better. Here we go. So in terms of the agent response, it's navigated the Surface laptop page and reviewed the models available. And then we have a summary of the options that are best suited for content creation, particularly video editing and multitasking, and it's ranked with the pros and cons. And yeah, it seems like the Surface Laptop 5 inch would be the best deal here. I am able to see my pros and my cons, followed by the 13.8 inch and then the 13 inch as well. It even refers to the, limiting, the limited graphing performance. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. We have offers a better RAM. So overall, I would say the browser automation tool would have saved me time if I was looking for a new laptop in this example. And you too can save time by giving your agent this tool so that way it can do browser tasks. That wraps up this episode of Inside Azure AI Foundry. Go give the browser automation tool a try with your agents. I'll be back next week with the latest drops from Azure AI Foundry with more demos and ways to put AI to work. Come join me in the Azure AI Foundry Discord if you have any feedback or questions. One of us in the chat will be more than happy to help. All right, I'll see you all in the next episode.